It is Thursday, October 6, 2011, the eve of our D-Day operation against the true enemy of our republic, the private run-for-profit Federal Reserve. Coming up in the second part of tonight's news transmission, Danny Panzella, uh, who's been really uh, exposing the Federal Reserve crime syndicate, will be joining us. And of course, tomorrow, Aaron Dykes will be sitting in, but we'll have reports from the ground in Dallas as we launch Operation Occupy the Federal Reserve. That is all coming up. Now, we understand, uh, and it's now admitted, that Obama, MoveOn.org, George Soros, are all saying they feel the pain of Occupy Wall Street. They feel the pain uh, of the American people. In fact, uh, Obama gave a speech today, and he claims the government has not gone after the banksters because, quote, a lot of practices going on weren't against the law. Why is that, Obama? Well, the private Federal Reserve that packed the Clinton White House and then the George Walker Bush White House got rid of Glass-Steagall in 1999 and made things that were illegal, legal. But just because a bunch of crooks got together and made, say, child kidnapping legal or human sacrifice legal or dog fighting legal for that matter, doesn't mean it should be legal. You know, they made it legal that blacks weren't human and were slaves in this country. Does that really make it legal? No. Common sense, common law, basic human dignity says that even if the Nazis say it's their right to line people up and shoot them in the head, it's illegal because free humanity says so, criminal. I'm sick of it. And now they've sent out their corporate whore media to go interview certain people at Occupy Wall Street groups to make it look like they're all a bunch of collectivist socialists who want to uh, tax what's left of the middle class and transfer it offshore and all these billionaires like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates promoting raising taxes on rich people. Then you find out it's 125,000 individually, quarter million collectively with you and your wife. Those are the upper middle class people financing what's left of this economy, this service economy. Globalists like Obama and his controllers already deindustrialized this nation. All we've got left is service. But I digress, my friends. This is teleprompter free news, so you get real analysis. Amazing story by Steve Watson and Paul Watson at InfoWars.com. Wall Street puppet Obama sympathizes with anti-Wall Street protests when he's totally and completely bankrupt, uh, bankrupting this country by design to bring us to our knees of these globalists. In fact, don't we have an article showing that he got double the campaign contributions uh, from Wall Street, uh, he actually got five times from Goldman Sachs, uh, if you pull up the numbers. Uh, Obama is the all-time king daddy of getting Wall Street money. And that was from before the campaign finished. By the end, Wall Street had really doubled down on him. Now, I want to continue to look at what's happening here. I remember three and a half years ago, uh, when not 800 plus billion was given to the offshore multinational Federal Reserve member banks. Uh, but if you count it all up now, we've learned 16.6 trillion with an additional 11 trillion. So you're getting up close to 28 trillion or more. And that's now all admitted now. They tried to keep it secret for years, and they would sit there and tell Congress, the private Federal Reserve, sorry, we're not going to tell you where the trillions went. But finally, it became so embarrassing they had to admit it. Billions of it went to people like MSNBC to sit up there and demonize people like myself and Ron Paul who think it's wrong to have a private group of corporations who are able to issue themselves unlimited money. Does that sound like a f level playing field or does it sound like it's completely slanted? That's what's happening. And now that things are falling apart, they're coming in saying, give us socialism and that'll fix the problems. They just want to socialize the grassroots wealth so nobody can challenge them. Now, People all week have said, Alex, comment on Bank of America. Well, I did years ago. Bank of America, Wells Fargo, um, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, all the big mega banks, Citigroup, they all announced back in 2008 when they got the trillions of dollars of taxpayer money that they were going to cut back on retail banking, that they were going to get rid of the bank that gives you an auto loan or a house loan. They were going to cut that way down and get rid of tellers. 
and they laid off earlier this year 30,000 workers. Then they laid off another 40,000 workers. If you add it all together, Bank of America alone has laid off about 90,000 workers in the last few years, and most of that uh, has been in 2011 alone. And what have they laid off? Well, uh, here's a Reuters article. Bank of America cuts foretell downturn in branch banking. Yeah, see, previous to uh, the end of Glass-Steagall that Clinton and the Republicans got rid of uh, in 1999, like, like Obama said, well, it's not illegal. <laughs> yeah, because you changed the law. Uh, previous to that, banks were allowed to loan out $10. Some banks in Europe, it was a little bit different, $8. eight Eight dollars for every one dollar. If you want to use dollar increments, nine dollars for every dollar, ten dollars for every dollar. It's fluctuated slightly, but that's called fractional reserve banking. But in '99, now 11, 12 years ago, they said we'll just completely decouple from that and allow the big mega banks, but only the big mega banks. Anybody else did it? They were shut down by regulators, the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. This is the rest of the story, the inside baseball. Anybody that didn't go along. Uh, you know, with their official plan, basically got shut down. And so instead of just loaning out 10 to 1, 9 to 1, whatever the case was, they could loan out unlimited trillions off of nothing. And so now they've got all these trillions, not just in the derivatives they created out of fraud in the Ponzi scheme, but also the bailout for the Ponzi scheme. But why actually bail out the Ponzi scheme when well, you can keep the scam going and keep people desperate? So now Bank of America and all these other big banks are saying, in Europe, and, the, and now they're talking about it here in the U.S., that they may charge you to keep money. Instead of you getting paid interest because they're loaning your money out and multiplying it, now they want to charge you to hold money. And they're saying the bank fees are all going to go up, not just Bank of America. They were the first to do it because they don't care. Five dollars every time you use your debit card or every time you withdraw money when it's your money that they're using in the bank. Why is that? Because they're flush with the 20 plus trillion dollars in their coffers and don't need your money anymore. They already got your money that you've got to pay back in taxes. Oh yeah, all of those bailouts, all of those trillions, you don't just pay when it devalues your currency through hyperinflation. They also want you to pay it back because that's a taxpayer bailout. You're getting screwed to bail them out and give them your money. You pay to be raped by them. That's like paying a robber to come rape your wife and knock your teeth out and then shoot your kids in the head. Only in America could frauds of this galactic level magnitude uh, go on. So that's why Bank of America is laying off its service sector jobs. They don't need to service you. The globalists already got rid of our industry. And now they're getting rid of the service jobs because they're gonna lower us down to North Korean level or Venezuelan level. The globalists are waging war against our economy. Okay, I'm done ranting about that. Uh, next, I want to get to one of the most important stories of the evening. Coming up are the uh, green globalists, the green collectivist. You remember a few weeks ago, we covered the fact that all over California, they're lying and saying there's a new law that you must take all the list of vaccines. Of course, we pointed this out, so the local news had to later admit, okay, it's not a law, it's a policy. Please sign our waiver. And then when they don't let your kids into school because they won't take the shots, then they sick the police on you for truancy, which they triggered by kicking your kids out. Let's go ahead and go to this clip. Hello, how are you, ma'am? My name's Heyman Matlock. I'm with the Thomas Unified School District. It's not easy going door to door making sure students are vaccinated. Your daughter is on independent study. Yes. Uh, Kayla, has she yes. been verified with her Tdap? No. Okay. We were coming today to give her a Tdap if she hasn't had it done yet. Get the <laughs> off my house. Now, again, if you're a new viewer, because even when I watch national shows on CNN, the people against forced inoculation still say, it's wrong, it's the law, my daughter's got to take this Gardasil because Rick Perry says so. There was never a law. Perry's had to admit that now. I went and checked it four years ago when he did it. There was no law. He just said, oh, it's our policy, and then they have the schools lie and say it's the law. And we were sent by a listener... Here's their uh, letter right here, but I'm not going to show you 
uh, their name. And it says the schools in Fremont Unified School District uh, passed these out today. Kids can't be expelled from school unless there is a active outbreak and there is not one. No mention of waiver in this letter. And when you read the letter, that's on the news they're doing this, it says it's the law, and I'll show you a document cam shot of this, and basically you'll be kicked out of school if you don't take the shots. And it goes on then to basically say, you know, then it, it'll trigger truancy laws and the police will come after you. So, so, so this is the type of uh, criminal garbage that schools across the country engage in, and that's uh, Fremont Unified School District uh, that just sent this letter out. One of our listeners uh, sent us a copy of it, and we got it in the mail. And you can see the Department of Education document number uh, for SoCo, Southern California right there. This is what your government thinks of you. Absolute, complete, and total abject fraud. And you heard that girl was on home study. I've seen it in the California news. Tens of thousands of parents aren't doing homeschooling. The school tricks them when they withdraw their kids because they want federal money. They'll call up and say, all right, just fill out this paperwork for home study. It's the law. Another hoax. You can homeschool any time. They trick you to stay with them, send your kid in once a month for testing, and do home study. So here's the mother in the newscast, pulls her child because they're saying she can't be in school if she doesn't take all these deadly shots. The mother says, okay, I'll homeschool them. And the school tricks again and says, okay, fill out these forms. You're on home study so they get the federal money. It's fraud within fraud, hoax within hoax, lie within lie, scam within scam, bamboozling fraudsters engaged in hokum and bunk and cockamamie skullduggery at nauseum against you and your family. How many scams will you accept? Is a sucker born every minute? And again, I'm not even against the te technology of vaccination, though it shows even when it's real, it creates autoimmune problems and lowers immunity. The point is these big vaccine companies have been caught adding cancer viruses, you name it, and the damn Gardasil shot doesn't even protect girls from cancer. My wife this morning was going through magazines and she ripped it out of a woman's magazine and said, look, they admit it causes all these problems and epilepsy and seizures and narcolepsy and <coughs> you gotta show this on air. And I said, "Hun, I have. She goes, but it says it doesn't protect you from this form of cancer. It says it on the, on, on the you know, they got the happy ad saying shoot boys up with it now. That was the point. I should have brought it in. Now they're saying boys should take it for cervical cancer and all this other stuff because they got cervixes, I guess. And then you flip it over and it, it's just got a huge page of fine print of what it does to you. It doesn't even protect you. I mean, it, it's just the level of fraud makes my head spin. Now, we got Luke Radowski of We Are Change being beat up by the cops, being slammed to the ground for being part of uh, Occupy Wall Street. That's coming up as we go to break and come back with our guest, who's also in Manhattan covering all this. But I want to go now to South by Southwest Eco Guy. Uh, South by Southwest is run by the Austin Chronicle, who have written fiction articles attacking me for 15 years. And I always wondered why they did such horrible things to me. It's because they're globalists. And they support anti-gun, anti-freedom, anti-family, uh, Planned Parenthood, uh, eugenics. I mean, it, it is a truly nasty organization. And, uh, of course, they would put on, and, and again, here it is, South by Southwest Eco Guide and Eco Conference. And, uh, you know, I told the guys, I said, I want you to go down to that. Tomorrow night, they're going to show you the Occupy Wall Street thing that happened today. They just got back from that. That was amazing. Complete with the Austin police chief running over saying, why is Alex calling me a communist? Uh, that's coming up tomorrow night. <laughs> Art Aceveda, what a piece of work. Uh, by the way, Art, we've been calling you to get you on for a while, so don't say that we're scared to have you on. Uh, your office must not be letting you know we called, so you're, you're welcome here next week, in fact, in here at this table, Art. But, but that's a side issue. We got a bunch of clips from this, and uh, we couldn't go there today when Jacques Cousteau's son was speaking because we had to be at the Occupy Austin event. 
but we were going to ask Jacques Cousteau about his dad saying, it's horrible to say 375,000 people have to be killed a day for the environment, but it's even more awful to say we shouldn't kill 300 plus thousand people a day. And those quotes are public along with Prince Philip and others. But I sent the guys down there and they, and they got their little pass. And then as soon as the, uh, the other operators of it saw the InfoWars uh, credentials, they started freaking out on them. And they had, uh, well, well, the clip's coming up later, uh, Mark, uh, how do you pronounce this guy's name? Yeah, Tersic, one of these little arrogant strutting guys when he runs up on the podium. And he was the managing director at Goldman Sachs, where he played a key role, this is from his bio, in developing the firm's environmental strategy. Goldman Sachs is the number one funder of carbon taxes and land grabs. Well, of course they are. Ken Lay of Enron came up with this operation. And what they do through General Electric is they get a waiver for their coal power plants, but they shut everybody else down. So that clip's coming up. And he agreed to the interview, our guys are taping, and then when they ask the question about Obama wanting to bankrupt coal, he freaks out and runs off. And then says, turn the camera off, so my guy kind of instinctively turns it off and then turns it back on, and McBreen chases him down the hall, uh, you know, saying, but, but what about General Electric getting waivers? And it was like he was a vampire that had been shown a giant silver cross. It was like, ah! I mean, it was, he jumped out of his skin. Or it was like roaches when you flip the light on. This big giant one looking at you, oh God. Uh, I mean, do you know how much money insiders are gonna make by shutting down most of the coal power plants, but their own, when it provides 51 plus percent of our power in this country? And are so clean now, all that comes out is carbon dioxide. That's why they list it as a pollutant now. But I digress. Let's go to clip one, uh, Eco Monsanto. Uh, perspectives on Monsanto Corps. We actually got a little more intelligent answers on, on, on this subject. Uh, you know, one lady thinks, oh, they're doing a lot better these days. This is a group, and all these major GMO crops have been found to cause infertility, all these problems connected to honeybees dying. You know, the first clip's a lady who just thinks, you know, that Monsanto is very loving. The next lady's a professor who is probably the smartest person at the whole conference. She's the equivalent of a third grader to this show, but she understood some of the basic problems. We might get her on and school her, and uh, then we'll get into some of the other clips. Here it is. What do you think about Monsanto Corporation? Interesting question. Is I that knew like you would. Is that the bad ask word? That. Is that the bad word? No, you know it's. Um, I mean, I think everyone has their opinion on Monsanto and the big agribusiness companies, and certainly they're far from perfect. But I think Monsanto has really been making a real effort to listen to their critics and improve their practices. When it comes to a Monsanto, um, they're the they own 90% of the genetically modified seed market, and um, they are take very seriously the proprietary nature of the work that they've done and the investment they've made. So, uh, farmers who purchase and use um, Monsanto's seeds are required to sign contracts to ensure that um, they will not be saving their seeds and they will not be cleaning them or sharing them or using them for another season. Should Monsanto be able to? Um you know, trademark seeds and then you can't get original seeds to grow corn and you have a, you know, that, that's the whole direction of that industry is under kind of corporate control and things like that. You're, you've, gone, you've come a long way from the, the farmer planting his corn seeds. This relatively new system, which has really only been in place for a handful of decades, asserts that um, seeds are no longer a commons. They are no longer in the hands of farmers, but rather they belong to corporations. Here's why I think people have a problem with Monsanto is is because the local farming industry seems to be uh, being shut down, but almost forcibly. I know you've heard the horror stories where they go in like uh, mafia style, you know, and 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 with their lawyers and everything, and shut down farms who might have had a seed that blew into their farm and that sort of thing. And then these farmers are can't afford the high-priced lawyers; they get shut down. But also. Uh, that the, a lot of local farming communities, like people are being arrested in California for selling milk. Uh, uh, have you heard of stuff like that? And what are your thoughts of that? I have heard of stuff like that, and I absolutely um, agree that those practices are problematic and shouldn't be followed. My concern is that whoever controls the seeds controls the food supply. Um, and what we're doing is seeing a concentration of that control into very few hands, um, and into those hands are hands of corporations. I mean, I think Monsanto's practices should be corrected. I think that some of what they, the, some of the things they've done are problematic. To me, there's a real problem in the patenting of life. 
life, uh, especially life that we depend on to continue living. I understand that a lot of um, research and development money was poured into the creation of certain kinds of seeds, but I, I believe that there's an intrinsic challenge in asking people um, to sign contracts not to share and save their seeds and into patenting technologies that, um, that really is required to sustain life. So to me, the fact that, that um, life forms are now in corporate hands rather than a trust of the people or in the hands of, of the government as something, as, as a representative of the people, is incredibly problematic. Now I'm going to go to Mark Tursik, who runs up gingerly to the podium and, Hi, I'm from Goldman Sachs. I'm the head of Nature Conservancy. Mm, we're going to shut down all our competition's power plants, but that's not really what he said. And then he was standing there with a long line of minions to interview him. You can't see it in the shop, but my crew told me about it. And our guys get up there first. He agrees to the interview, and they say, well, yeah, what about Obama saying he wants to bankrupt coal power plants? And it is just like deer in the headlights. Whoa, whoa, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. Uh, it's just incredible. And then McBrain chased him down the hall and tried to bring up, well, General Electric, uh, they're exempt from this, and they're on the president's council. And, of course, they talked to folks earlier about, well, China gets to build these, but we don't. Well, that's problematic, but so what? As long as America's destroyed, I mean, as long as we run everything. Listen, we decide your light bulb, your toilet, everything. And G GMO's not too bad, though. Sure, it sterilizes the little mice, but there's too many of those as well, too many people. Uh, we're trendy. We're going to talk to you like this. And, oh, in fact, let me just get into before I get to this guy. Oh, it's real. Oh, oh I'm a Coleman Sachs. We, we're the folks that brought you derivatives. You know, we work with Ken Lay on this carbon tax thing. How you doing, Buffy? Oh, my God, Gilligan. What are we going to do with you? The people are waking up. And after he was done running, he was like, run away, stop. you like the emperor or something in that joke piece they do. Uh, but he, uh, he's scurrying away like a, like a miscreant rodent. And, uh, well, he didn't like saying, you don't have my authorization to use this. The, the, the camera was off by them, and they told me about it. You're at a public event. Our media came in. You're a public figure, pal, trying to shut down our power plants. We will show you, and I hope you sue me, because I want to counter sue you, and I want to get into those minutes. I want to get into those minutes. I want to get into that discovery process with you so bad. You just think you sit there and trendy. You can't tape me. Uh, and we're just going to urinate on ourselves and go, yes, master, you're a trendy East Coaster. Uh, you're liberal. Uh, uh, you're too powerful. Let's go ahead and go to the clip. Here it is. He helped pioneer groundbreaking new land preservation techniques such as conservation easements and debt for nature swaps and works with all sectors of society including businesses, individuals, communities, and government agencies. His initiatives are vast and challenging, his approaches varied and creative, and with over one million members strong, his reach undeniable. We are getting all the property. I am a control freak pinhead. I am trendy. My sh oh, look at this guy. Now watch how he like, he like struts up on the stage. Oh, they cut it. Let me just say it's a real honor to be here at the first South by Southwest Eco Forum. Hi, I'm Goldman Sachs. I want to pray upon you. For a long time, I worked at Goldman Sachs. I know it's not very fashionable to praise. Oh, Austin. but you're trendy, though. Goldman Sachs these days, but thank you for not booing. We're waging war on the real economy. <laughs> uh, I had a really good career there, but in my career, I got very interested in business. I worked with lots of big businesses, and I'm one of these true believers who thinks business can really make a positive difference. We're with InfoWars Nightly News and uh, KLBJ. All right. In Austin, Texas. Okay, good. Um, so okay, I don't, good. let's start. What, what's your questions? Well, uh, that one's too complicated for me. Here, let me hold the mic just so I can, right. I can get my question right. in there anyway. But um, um, th these are more of the, for the proponents, I guess, if you will, of coal power plants. Um, I'm just trying to get both sides of the story. But I want to know if you're familiar with President Obama's statement that he wanted to bankrupt the yeah, coal power plants. I don't think I want to do this. All right. I'm going to pass. Thanks. Sure? Yeah, I'm not ready on this topic. And I don't really like video because... I got one that can see. We should have that clip where I got one that can see. Get in there and deal with him right now. He was looking at you with that predatory scanning. Zzz, 
control, manipulate scientific data, take over, blast control, world government, shut down infrastructure, ship everything to China. He's just, look at this person. And you're like, I can see. And he's like, whoa, 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 no, a red alert, red alert. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, humanity will crush you. <laughs> ah, I love it. They're weak. And the minute we reveal them, their destruction begins. Ah. What about what? Roll the cold clip. Go ahead. I don't know if you're familiar with President Obama's statement that he wanted to bankrupt the coal power industry. Well, that's not a fair statement. I. I hope he didn't make that statement. So if somebody wants to build a coal power plant, they can. It's just that it will bankrupt them because they're going to be charged a huge sum for all that uh, greenhouse gas that's being emitted. Um, that's not the way to fix things by any means. You know, coal is a, is an asset that we have, and, you know, if we can burn it clean, that'd be great. Well, I think that coal is, like, I think... That's the largest emitter of carbon as far as our energy sources go, and I think that's a good idea to shut them down. But the thing is, is they're shutting down and they're moving in to China, yeah. so how is more, is it better for the Earth in China than it is in the U.S.? Definitely not. I think that in China they're trying to build industry, and I see that as a good thing. However, I don't think coal is necessary pause right there. to build I shot that video along with Rob Jacobson is out there back from vacation. I'm just joking, Rob. <laughs> I, I shot that video. I shot that video out the window with, with Rob, and it was like below zero in Billings, Montana. And all that is is hot air coming out and carbon dioxide and water vapor. But they'll show it and go, look at the smoke. It's deadly. The, the nothing comes out of those. There's giant scrubbers. And that's what supplies your power. And Austin Energy is admitting it's going to be like a 60% increase in the next few years just off the eco stuff. Nothing to do with the environment. People are like, I think it's good old ladies are going bankrupt on the Social Security. If we pay the big oil companies that are shutting down coal more money, it'll fix it. And, and, and look, I just get mad at these Goldman Sachs guys and these scammers. And it's just good to realize what scum they are and, and how afraid they are and that we see who they are. It's just, it's victory. The minute you uncloak them, the minute you just see them for what they are, they are like worms. They are so weak. I'm sorry I have a little celebration there. And when I do get that, that insane, I do start like, tasting metal in my mouth and stuff. I, 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 just, I can literally feel them evaporating underneath my feet. And we will defeat them. Oh, we will go to the Fed tomorrow as well and occupy it. Okay. Uh, oh, socialism. Yeah, those that doubt that the big banks are trying to fund socialism instead of getting rid of the Federal Reserve, this is... Uh, this is out of Pittsburgh. It's an email. Occupy Pittsburgh, uh, cooped or co-opted um, by uh, the socialists. And this is being handed out. And he says, hey, guys, I just wanted to share this little gem of magazine being touted at the General Assembly. There were 400 people there. And then the article continues, the email. And he goes on to say that uh, I... I hopped on the mic and proposed a monetary policy working group, since you know it's the actual problem and it was overwhelmingly nade. Yeah, they just want to take money from somebody that's got money. And then, and of course, they got angry and booed them off the stage, except for a few info warriors. Okay, so, so there you have it. We got to go ahead and get to, the, get to the interview coming up here in a moment. We even have more, though. We have Luke Radowski being manhandled by our loving New York police that were given $4.6 million the day before Occupy Wall Street began by Goldman Sachs. So we'll go ahead and go to that clip, uh, go to break, and come back with our next guest. Stay with us. Each new man. 
racing video that's released, each new depiction of the abuses of the police on the First Amendment, the more people will show up here in New York City, and the more waves of occupation will spread across this country. And you should be proud of that, police, because you are participating in our media publicity campaign. Thank you for attending. Now, we're going to be occupying the real enemy. We're going to be going up against the actual globalists, the enemies of our republic, not some vague attack on people that are part of the free market that these monopoly capitalists are actually enemies of. We are back. It is October 6, 2011, on this Thursday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Less than 24 hours before we occupy the Fed all over the United States. Now, a few months ago, um, I interviewed Danny Panzella, and he had gone out with his baby and protested the Fed, and then that caused the discovery to come forth that the Newark police were spying on Facebook and other systems and had called out 50 plus officers to literally encircle the Fed because one evil person uh, with their child uh, dared to come out and talk about the private banking oligarchy that ran this country. Then I interviewed him, uh, and they had hundreds of people uh, show up at his next event there at Wall Street. And since then, uh, he came up with his, the idea to occupy the Fed. Uh, and of course, I, I, I wanted to get him on about the fact that he's gotten some media attention, and it shows what, what one man can do when you start taking action. As Martin Luther King said, the universe uh, bends towards justice. Uh, and uh, he said, oh, yeah, we had the idea weeks ago to occupy the Fed and told him about the website when I just separately thought we've got to occupy the Fed instead of instead of occupying, you know, just saying capitalism is bad when the global monopoly cartel is actually the enemy of free market and capitalism. And so I wanted to get him on uh, the show tonight here at InfoWars Nightly News and PrisonPlanet.tv. Let's go to a short compilation of him out there with his baby uh, strapped strapped to his chest. As a father, I've done that with my three children, it's so sweet, uh, with the police around him. And then we'll show his Dylan Radigan interview and then when he was on Judge Andrew Napolitano's show on Fox Business. The point is, this is an example of how you can get involved and take action as well. Let's go ahead and go to that clip. Thomas Jefferson said, I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. The Federal Reserve is a metaphor for value, for wealth creation. And instead of having an economy that's based on working together to solve problems to create value and wealth, we have a banking system that invents it for the benefit of those who want to preserve power for themselves. And Wall Street protester Danny Penzella. Danny, to you first. What are the protests about? What do you and, other, the, and the other protesters want? Well, I think that for the most part, uh, the protesters are looking for freedom and equality. And uh, they have a little bit of a different view on how to get there than the Tea Party does. If you cut through the rhetoric, some of the goals are, are really the same. The power of the individual is as powerful as the universe is infinite. Tom Hanks. And of course, there's the Mahatma Gandhi quote uh, about the fact that uh, in all of us is the seed of the universe. Now. Danny Panzella has been going out there and trying to educate the Occupy Wall Street people. It's a very diverse group, but as I said a week ago, it's now been confirmed, the Democrats are trying to occupy it. They're trying to take it over and spin it that Obama's fighting the corruption of Wall Street when he's totally financed by the private Federal Reserve corrupt elements of it. You see, the Federal Reserve, as we talked about last night with Gerard Griffin, he's gonna be joining us again tomorrow night, is waging war against true diversity and the true free market. And Danny has been breaking that down. Danny, great to have you here with us this evening. It's always a pleasure, Alex. So you've been out there today, yesterday. You're about to go back out later tonight. Uh, 
what does Occupy Wall Street really stand for, or is it just a, a diverse group? It's a very diverse group. And I think you can see that it's evident in the list of demands. There's kind of this kind of hodgepodge of of some of it's even silly. And the reason that is, is because they have this group of grassroots activists that are all coming together and they vote on every single thing they do. It's a it's a true grassroots democracy. So, you know, and they're trying to be all inclusive of all these ideas. Uh, it definitely is weighed towards the left. Uh, you know, I'm not going to pretend that it isn't, but there is a strong showing of libertarians, of anarcho-capitalists, of many different. Uh, there's even a bunch of Ron Paul uh, Republicans down there. So uh, there's a lot of people that are there and there's a lot of ideas being exchanged. And the media is absolutely lying about what is happening here. And that goes for both the left and the right wing media. The right wing media, I heard Sean Hannity today talking about how this is a Soros funded thing and that's designed to get the right to say, well, I'm not going to get involved with that. And that that prevents the left and the right uh, at the grassroots level from uniting and coming together against the real enemy, the Federal Reserve. So and that's just like the Tea Parties, where three, four years ago it was just libertarian freedom. Republicans came in and took it over. Uh, MSNBC said they're all racist. So if you're not white, well, you can't be for ending the Federal Reserve or ending the wars like the original Tea Party was. Uh, so again, it's about divide and conquer, and so now there's a Occupy Wall Street movement that doesn't have all the answers, that's diverse. Soros comes in, the president comes in, they don't really speak for him, but the mainstream media plays into it on both the left and right, again, to engage in that divide and conquer. That's right. And because these are not professional protesters, these are grassroots people, they get a little starstruck. Mike Moore shows up and they think, oh, we're going to get some press coverage now. So they let him speak. And then the media puts Mike Moore forth as he's as if he's the voice of Occupy Wall Street. And of course, like he told Luke, I don't want to worry about the Fed. That's we need to get rid of capitalism. Here's he's what he's a capitalist. He's the not Fed pushes to get rid of capitalism. Right. They want a centrally planned economy, and that's my argument. When I'm talking one-on-one -on -one with these people down there, they say, well, the free market caused this. I said, well, we don't have a free market. We have a centrally planned economy run by a private banking cartel. And light bulbs start to go off in their heads, and they start to realize, and we, all, we are making real progress down there. So I've been doing that since day one. The, the uh, Occupy Wall Street protest started, and the movement, the libertarian, well, the free market movement has been growing ever since, and there's more and more people coming down and just taking part in conversations all day long during the Occupy Wall Street uh, be between marches and protests. They have these forums where they just have economic and political uh, discussions. And we need free market people in those forums sharing the, the ideas of liberty uh, that have resonated in the hearts of men for all time uh, to inspire men to fight for their freedom. So uh, the Occupy the Fed movement was just a way for us to capitalize on the momentum that Occupy Wall Street has and shift it back because the, the uh, establishment left is working really hard. Sending, they sent 50,000 union people down there yesterday to co-opt it and direct it back towards the establishment right. And we are down there fighting every day. That's to make right. Sure I was talking to Luke uh, because we, nobody could talk to him. People that thought that he brought a group down to the Fed and that he'd been arrested there, but it was actually b before that even happened. And, and, and now we've learned that Luke and others, and he was saying a lot of the people, almost a majority, close to half, were like, yeah, we should protest the Fed. But the union leaders and the little yell leaders, they were able to know, let's just direct it off against capitalists and which is exactly what the globalists want, more taxes on the middle class to pay it in banker bailouts. And that's why this is so key that we actually occupy Federal Reserve uh, structures around the country, uh, you know, around uh, their property line on city streets in Dallas tomorrow. I'm going to be there. I'm calling for folks to stay there and demand media attention. Uh, it caused a bunch of people today to go there and turned out it was like 600 reported and there was just massive media coverage. Uh, and I'm now learning that there have been other Occupy the Fed movements, people spontaneously having this idea uh, in Boston and other areas. And that's something the Federal Reserve can't deal with. I'm sure you saw two, three weeks ago, alternative media had it. But now last week, Forbes first reported on the mainstream corporate media that the Federal Reserve is making a list of people that criticize it. And that's a form of intimidation. I mean, this is such a joke.
And I'm sure that me and my son are at the top of that list, uh, but that's not going to silence us. I'm not going to stop. We are at a, a, a moment in history right now, and we need to choose, and the Tea Party and everyone else needs to choose are you going to are you going to let your ego get in the way and say i'm not going to work with a leftist or i'm not going to work with a communist or i'm not going to work with a tea party or are you going to let your ego stand in the way of real change because we have the opportunity now to join forces this is an issue the fed is an issue that both the left and the right can get behind are we going to join forces forces and go against this criminal cartel or are we going to allow them to to use ego to divide and conquer us and yet another revolution is going to diminish into nothing well, Danny, uh, look, true liberty, the ideas of freedom, the ideas of controlling your own local area, this is much more inviting, much more uh, alluring and, and, and successful historically than the tired old Soviet or communist or collectivist systems. And I've been criticized for having a Roseanne Barr on or an Ed Asner on, but the point is they're starting to listen to my show. They're starting to say, I like Ron Paul. Well, I do get that the mega banks want their own form of socialism to make people dependent. And they're starting to really listen to us. We have the superior ideas. And when the establishment left says, don't go to a tea party, they're all racist to the left, that's because the system is scared of people coming together. And when the establishment right says, don't go down to these events, well, even if it was a bunch of communists, which it isn't, on average. So what? Go down and engage them. Go down and treat them like human beings and really discuss things. I mean, there isn't a liberal I have talked to who won't wake up when you explain the true history of gun control, who won't actually get into it. And that's why the gun control lobby's falling apart and being reversed. And the ATFs are probably going to get abolished. And it turns out they're a bunch of narcotics traffickers shipping guns all over Latin America to knock out competition. Uh, the DEA, the FBI, they're all involved. This is a wake-up call. And the only hope the establishment has is playing us off against each other. And they're experts at it. You know, when I came out a week ago and said, I've looked at this. It's got Soros all over it. They're calling for socialism. Well, that was the media focusing on that. But at the same time, it was important for me to say, hey, let's not make that the grassroots movement against the Fed. The Fed saying, throw me in the briar patch. You know, please don't throw me in it. That's where they want to go. I wasn't saying people protesting Wall Street and its excesses of corruption were bad. I was saying, hey, let's go after the real problem, the Federal Reserve that dominates and controls Wall Street and that's consolidating it. Uh, in closing, I'm very optimistic. I mean, the, the, the private Federal Reserve is so outrageous. Uh, they had to operate as a fraud, saying they were federal for 98 years. And as soon as they're exposed as the Ponzi scheme fraud, elaborate scam they are, it's game over. No amount of police state is going to save them. Now, what comes out of this in the next few years to come, uh, that sometimes you can have a revolution and something worse comes. Uh, so that's why now it's important that we do occupy the private Federal Reserve and really point out that it is the mega corporations using collectivism. Uh, what's your view on the future and what it holds? Well, I think that we're going to find out. Uh, I'm calling for the Tea Party and Occupy Wall Street to join forces. Put down your egos because we can do this. It is game over for the Fed if both grassroots movements merge together and fight against that enemy. And once we cut off that leash, that's the leash around Congress's neck. If we cut off that, that leash of the Federal Reserve, now they're not gonna, they're, they won't have the power over Congress that they do. The Congress will finally start to represent we the people, because really that's the reason both the Tea Party and Occupy have stood up. They, they, they feel like they have been disenfranchised and only the top 1% are represented, and it's true. So we need to join together and work against the real enemy, not be distracted by the media, because the media on both sides, you're going to start to see now, even the left media is going to come out and demonize the Occupy Wall Street uh, protests as if, if they start to attack the real enemy, which is the Federal Reserve, the Fed's going to make, up, make phone calls to all those CEOs who run those media companies, and you're going to start seeing all those people who were, who were supporting uh, the Occupy Wall Street, Olbermann and some of the others, are going to get shut down or shut up. Exactly. So it is grassroots. The systems try to take it over from the left, like the establishment right, trying to take over the Tea Party. And if they're not successful, they're going to demonize it. And they've already tried to demonize it by having the right say it is pure Soros. 
and then people misrepresenting what I've said and other things, saying, no, there's an attempted takeover. That doesn't mean it's Sorosian. It means that there's an attempted takeover there. And it just shows how, 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 how complex uh, all of this is. And uh, from what I'm seeing from our reporters and others, we are winning the fight to wake them up to go after the Fed. And so get ready for that demonization uh, to really kick into high gear. Well, Danny, right. thank you so much for spending time with us. Look forward to, to talking to you soon. In just a few months from you out there by yourself with your baby uh, to now having an even bigger effect, you're another testament to the power of the individual. That's right. Thank you so much, Alex. And that's what it's all about, individualist coming together to fight the collectivist and the hive Borg. Well, that's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Aaron Dykes is going to be sitting in tomorrow while I'm up in Dallas for Occupy the Fed there. And then folks are going to stay there uh, over the weekend as I leave to get media attention. I'm going to travel to Houston at high noon uh, and to speak for several hours at the Federal Reserve. And the, and the address is all on InfoWars.com. And, and they're on your screen. And then I'll travel to speak um, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. to noon, uh, there in San Antonio at that branch of the Federal Reserve uh, Bank of Dallas. And all over the country, people are really getting excited about this, marching on the enemy itself. It's taken many years to identify the globalists, to identify the private Federal Reserve banking cartel. And now it's an idea whose time has come. I want to I want to leave you with this. Just 10 years ago, Ron Paul couldn't get a single co-sponsor for his audit and abolish the Federal Reserve legislation. Now it passed the House, went to the Senate, got watered down, but next time it's going to pass all the way through. Once these criminals are identified, they can stall for a while, but in the end, nothing is going to put their fraud back together again like Humpty Dumpty. Think how far we've come. And we couldn't be doing this right now, and we couldn't be putting out these type of powerful ideas nationwide and seeing it, 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 it burst into flame uh, politically, uh, like Thomas Jefferson talked about setting brush fires in the minds of men and women. If you hadn't been PrisonPlanet.tv subscribers, if you hadn't bought the books, the videos, the the t-shirts, the things at InfoWars.com. We are taking that money and putting it right back into trying to grow this operation. So your support and your memberships at PrisonPlanet.tv are more important than ever. Uh, buying the high-quality, gravity-fed water filters at InfoWars.com, that's more important than ever. Spreading the word about the show, even if you have no money. You know, we know this goes from the subscription site to YouTube where we post it and everywhere else, and, then, and that's our goal. It is you, the subscribers, that literally underwrite this media organization and this operation uh, reaching out to everyone. And so if you're out there watching and you aren't a PrisonPlanet.tv member, check out all the films, the books, uh, the eight and a half years of information that is posted at PrisonPlanet.tv. You are literally standing not behind us, but right beside us. Again, I'm Alex Jones signing off for the Info War. I'll see you tomorrow from Dallas, and we'll have reports here with Aaron Dyke, 7 p.m., and on the radio tomorrow from Dallas from the InfoWars command bus.